Tables and Charts Lesson 17A. Remember, I always have video links in the description to help you. A table shows information in rows and columns as numbers, and there are labels for those numbers. So here we've got a table that shows a column of years and a column of salaries, and when we look at the row going across, we can see what they made for that year, what their salary was. See? That's a table. Rows go across, columns go up and down. Okay. A chart shows information in bars, lines, or slices of a circle, like this pie chart shows slices of a circle. Looks like a pie, doesn't it? And the bar chart has bars that go up or show the values. A line chart has one line, or it could have two or three. I'll show you in the next video. And then everywhere that there is a dot represents that data. They organize data or information, and we can find specific data where the columns and rows intersect. We read all the titles and labels first to find the information that relates to what we need. So if we're looking for some specific information, we have to read all the titles and labels first. Okay? So take a look at this one. This is a mileage table. It shows the number of miles between certain cities in Florida. So you can see here to go from clear water to clear water. Well, that's zero. You're already there, aren't you? But to go from Clearwater, Florida to Daytona Beach, it's 159 miles. See? To go from Daytona Beach to Fort Lauderdale is 230 miles. But to go to Daytona to Daytona is zero. See? Because you're already there. So that's why the zeros are coming down on an angle. It's where that city meets itself, so we have zero as a placeholder. But we could intersect any city to another city to find the distance in miles from this table. Isn't that great? Emma needs to drive from Fort Lauderdale to Miami and from Miami to Orlando. So maybe she's Ashley got to drive to Orlando, but she's going to stop in Miami to drop something off. So she's going to Fort Lauderdale, then to Miami, and then from Miami to Orlando. Using the table, how many miles will she drive? So we look at this table. She needs to go from Fort Lauderdale to Miami. So here's Fort Lauderdale. We go across until we see Miami. That's the other red arrow. And Fort Lauderdale and Miami meet at the 26. So we know they're 26 miles apart. So that's 26 miles. Now we see where Miami and Orlando intersect. It's going to be 229. So here's Miami, and here's Orlando, and where they intersect is 229. Well, all we have to do is add these distances to get a total. It's going to be 255 miles. That's how far she's going to have to drive. Okay? So we use the information from the table, and it helped us solve the problem. All right. A frequency table tracks how many times an event occurs, and they may contain subtotals of numbers or tally marks. And when you see the four tally marks with the one crossing it, just remember that's a five. It represents a five, and we can count them very quickly just by counting by fives, can't we? So if we took a survey and asked everyone if they like dogs, cats, birds, reptiles, or rodents as their favorite pet, and Every time we got an answer, we put a tally mark. When we got to four, we crossed it for the five. We can count these very quickly and say five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that's 18 for dogs, five, 10, 11, 12, 12 for cats, see? And we use one tally mark to represent each answer. And we can easily see which pet is preferred the most, least, or count the number of the tallies. So how many more prefer dogs to cats? Well, we have 18 dog answers and 12 cat answers. We pull the information from the tally table, and we see that there's six more. For the people surveyed, six more prefer dogs than cats. Now, you may survey 50 other people, and you may get rodents as the preferred answer. It just depends on who you're asking, right? We can count all the tally marks to see that 56 people were surveyed in all. So by counting every single tally mark, we know how many people were asked. We know how many were in this survey group. See? Now here's a table. It's all the different models of 
well, some different models of calculators, and these are Texas Instrument calculators, so you see it, the TI in front of the model number, and there's all these different models. Here's their dimensions, their prices, and how much they weigh. So from this table, what is the length difference between the TI-30XS and the TI-84 plus C? Now, you're going to come across problems like this in the GED, and they all look so similar. You could be looking very quickly and think that that's an 8 because you didn't pay that close of, an atten of attention to it. So you might think that's TI-84 because there's all these 84s. So be very, very careful when you're looking at these tables. You might see some very similar numbers and answers, and you have to make sure you're picking the correct one. It wants to know the length difference between the TI-30XS, that's this one, and the TI-84 plus C. Now this one's the plus CE, so you got to be careful. So the length is the first measure. This is length, width, and height, length, width, and height. So the length is going to be the first number. So this one is 11.8, and the TI-30XS is 10. So it's 1.8 inches difference between the two. See? Tables may be filled with a lot of unnecessary information, so be careful. So out of all of this information, we didn't need the prices. We didn't need the weights. We didn't need these other dimensions. We just needed that 11.8 and that 10. That was all. See? Here's some water tanks. Here's their model numbers and the capacity in gallons that they hold, their dimensions, and how much they cost. How many more cubic inches is the WTA11 model than the WTA1 model? Very close in names, so be very careful which one you pick. It wants to know how many more cubic inches this one, this third one is, than the one above it. So this one's 1,000 gallons, and that's 500 gallons, but what's their cubic inch difference? So we need to find each cubic measure separately. And if you remember from before, we do length times width times height. So we can do 127 times 60 times 51. We get 388,620 inches cubed. Then we do 92 times 48 times 29 to get the cubic measure, and we get 128 and 64 inches cubed. That's the length, the width, and the, width and the height. We subtract the second number from the first number and get 260,556 inches cubed. So we had to do some manipulation to this before we could answer the problem. We had to solve another part of it first. We had to find the cubic inches first. So sometimes on the test, you're going to see a table, and you're going to have to use the information on the table in order to solve the problem, not just take it off and answer, like, what is the price of the WTX1? Well, 480. That's easy. And then you would write the answer, 480. That's great for reading the table, but you're going to have problems where you're actually going to have to use the information in a formula or in a an equation in order to find out what it's asking, okay? So be careful. You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 193, and I hope everything's okay, and I, I hope you can do it. Just all I can say is watch out for the unnecessary information and be very, very careful how you read the tables and the charts, okay? We're going to talk about bar and line graphs next. That's lesson 17b, and there's a couple of great videos in my grade 6 uh, playlist, 7.1 and 7.4. I'm going to have links in this video's description so that you can watch them. And it talks about tables and charts, okay? We're going to move on, do the bar and line graphs. And if you have any trouble, just watch this video again or watch those videos that are linked. I hope you do well. If you do, I'll see you next video. And have a great day. If you liked the video and it helped you, hit the like button. Bye.